Good morning, everyone. Gather in, now it's time to worship. So we would like to welcome you all on behalf of Campus Ministry to Dady Chapel. Uh, today we will hear a good word about wrestling with angels from our own beloved President Pribinal. And afterwards we are blessed to be a blessing to bless our very own volleyball team. Thank you for gathering with us and trusting us. So let us center ourselves. We begin our worship in the name of Mother and God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now we'll hear a gathering song from our very own campus ministry, Deacons and Church Choir. Down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and we shall wear the robe and crown the door so we go away. Thank you. A reading from Genesis. Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Grace and peace to you from our creator God, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and from the Holy Spirit that enlivens and sustains us. Amen. Good morning. It's wonderful to be together in person again with members of our Board of Regents who are here for the first time in 20 months. And I thought that it would be fitting this morning to reflect a bit on our commitment to higher education in a Lutheran way. So what do you think of when you hear about our Lutheran colleges and universities? I'm sure there are many alums here uh, and students, of course, of our colleges in the congregation today. I'm a proud Luther College grad. I get to wear the ring here. And uh, as you know, I now have the honor to serve as Augsburg's 10th president. And I read this text from Genesis and I immediately thought of Augsburg's world-class wrestling program. Jacob might have been a NCAA champ, 
And as you might know, our chief rival for NCAA championships is the team from our sister school, Wartburg College, who would have imagined two Lutheran universities vying for wrestling titles. Or maybe you've had the experience like me when our kids, Thomas and Maya, were maybe seven and four years old, and we were at Target after church one Sunday, and the kids were a couple aisles away, and all of a sudden I hear them singing at the top of their lungs, Jesus loves me. Now, instead of rushing over to quiet them down, I thought how wonderful that I was raising future members of the Augsburg or Luther or St. Olaf choirs. Or maybe your memories of our Lutheran colleges are friends for a lifetime or that faculty member who changed your life with a class or a word or wise advice or daily chapel services that draw our community together. Whatever your memories, and they are all still important to our lives on campus today, I wanna to suggest that at the heart of our mission as a university grounded in Lutheran faith and values is our deep and abiding commitment to walking alongside our students as they wrestle with angels. Wrestling just like Jacob did millennia ago to secure a blessing, to find a way in the world, to discern a calling, to live faithfully as a child of God. This thing called faith is so central to our lives, to our tradition and our role in the world. And yet too often we find it extremely difficult to engage each other in conversations about what we believe and why. I believe deeply that we need to talk about our faith and its role in our private and public lives. And it's perhaps more relevant than ever before because the world needs people of faith. The evidence is so clear that we are a fallen people in pain, separated from our better natures, fragmented from each other, at war within and without. Surely we all know the reality of what the Apostle Paul called creation's groaning. And we could leave it just there as many do with no evidence for optimism, no sense of what it all means, no horizon that inspires us to go on. Yet as people of faith, we are called to hope. We are called to faith acknowledging creation's groaning while also believing that the divine is active in our midst. We find hope in the glimpses of God's reign in our history, in our daily lives. Faith is what helps us live in the paradox that Martin Luther called simul usus de peccator, people living in the tension of being saved and yet still sinful, in the tension of creation's groaning and the mysterious and redemptive work of God in our lives, wrestling with angels even. The context of this elegant tension, I've been thinking about faith a good bit over the past few months as we try to continue to think about what faith plays in the Augsburg University community. And I have a, just a few little vignettes that I'd like to share that have given me insight into how faith plays a role for all of us on this campus. First, a story of my son Thomas's adoption. Some of you know Thomas, he's a junior here at Augsburg. So imagine this situation. Five families are gathered in an orphanage conference room in Soc Trang, Vietnam. There are some brief speeches, food is served, and all of a sudden five children are carried out from the back room. There ensues this remarkable cacophony of screaming and crying and picture taking. And then we are off, loaded into vans and on our way back to our lives, changed forever by what happened in that orphanage. The scene, it seems to me, is a glimpse of what happens to all of us when faith breaks into our life. Sometimes a ceremony, cacophony, and our lives are changed forever. It's this wondrous moment of transformation, of being claimed and named, of becoming part of a new family, of receiving the greatest gift we could ever imagine to receive. It is this story that helps me to understand that faith truly is a gift not to be coveted or expected, to, but to be received, to be chosen by God, to be God's child, to become part of God's family, to belong, to belong as a child of God. Faith disrupts our lives, surprises us, transforms what we expect to happen, changes us forever. And there's nothing we can do but receive the gift and then live, then live as gifted people. And then there's a story of Betsy, an Augsburg student. Betsy's like many of our students who come to the college not sure exactly what she believes, and yet she jumps into the life of the college, a good student, a good citizen, and more and more an active participant in our campus, campus kitchen program. Betsy begins to understand through her work with our neighbors here in this neighborhood and across the way in Seward how much she values the opportunity to be of service, perhaps initially because it feels good, but more and more because she begins to understand what she learns in relationship with our neighbors, 
She's disappointed when she is asked simply to deliver the meals. She wants to sit at table in fellowship and community with our neighbors. Surely Betsy shows us what it means to think about faith as call, not a finished product, but a story unfolding where faith is not a certain fact, but an evolving narrative of a life that comes to understand what it means to live as a gifted person of faith. My teacher, Martin Marty, says that the distinctive mark of faithful people is acts of mercy. Martin Luther himself uses the word neighbor more than almost any other word in his voluminous writings. Faith as call teaches us that there is not necessarily one destination point, one place where we can call it a day. Faith as call reminds us of the seeking and searching that accompanies a life of faith. Faith is loving the neighbor, doing acts of mercy. Faith is an unfolding story to our lives that may not be what we expected. Finally, the story of my mother, Elsie. My mom died 19 years ago this past summer, and during her final couple of weeks, she was surrounded by the vigil of friends and family in the hospice care center where she was lodged. My mother, who was a most remarkable woman, had been battling cancer for several years, and now having made some Difficult decisions about her treatment alternatives was in a time of peaceful and faithful waiting for the disease to run its course. For a large family, I'm the oldest of six children, all married with children of our own, made frequent visits to see mom and grandma, valuing the time together and with her. Our visits struck me as instructive for all of us as we keep vigil with and for each other. I wonder what we might all learn from those times when we band together with family, friends, coworkers, teammates, fellow citizens to pay attention, to wait for, to mark out the time in preparation for some impending moment. Here then is faith as promise. The ways in which we suspend our own notions of time and progress and success to wait patiently and prayerfully for God's will to be done. This is faith reaching to a deeper place in our lives, asking us to remember all the ways in which our lives are shaped by the people we care about, to console each other, to be faithful partners in the work of grieving loss and celebrating lives well-lived, to learn how healing is more often about broken hearts and spirits than about broken bodies, to be patient, to wait for things beyond our control, to show us the way to a new place, to wonder, at the awesome power of life and death and of our grand and mysterious God, and to hope, to hope for things to come. And when my mom passed into our God's embrace, we experienced what the hymn writer John Ilvesacker has called, just one last surprise, God's promise of abundant and eternal life. Faith as gift, call, and promise. Faith as a life unfolding, we join together to proclaim, Lord, I believe, I believe in your gifts, your call, your promise, even as we admit, help my unbelief, my struggles to receive the gift, to discern and live the call, to wait for the promise. This is faith living in the world, full of tensions and full of grace. This is our call for all of us to wrestle with angels. Thanks be to God. Amen. And we're going to sing the summons and to and respecting your time, I'd like to start with this fourth verse. Will you love the you you hide if I but call your name? We love our neighbors as ourselves. Let's reflect on these words of the fourth and the fifth verse.
And now we invite the volleyball team to please stand and receive this blessing. And we invite the community to just stretch your hands out in the ritual of blessing on one accord. A blessing is a circle of light drawn around a person or a group to protect, heal, and strengthen. The beauty of the blessing is its belief that it can affect one of foes, invoking the power and promise of the divine. We offer this blessing for student athletes in our midst and those who mentor and guide them. Today at the start of this school year, this community together offers a blessing for the volleyball team. Holy one, bless this Augsburg women's volleyball program, its athletes, coaches, trainers, and leaders of our community, that together we may learn and grow in unity, respect, and mutual compassion. Keep these athletes safe and healthy during their practices, training, and games as they navigate the rigors of this season. Expand the horizons of their minds through their academic pursuits and studies that they all may grow in wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Bless them to grow physically as they use the gifts and talents they have been given. Bless the coaches to be fair in their expectations of the players, constructive in criticism and graceful in encouragement. Awaken the giftedness in each team member and build in them the confidence to show up and leave it all on the floor, holding nothing back. Bless them to be kind and fair to the opponents and to play with integrity and good sportsmanship. May they see every teammate as a sibling and every opponent as their neighbor. And finally, may these volleyball players and coaches strive diligently and tirelessly to have fun, play hard, and do their best to be humble in victory and compassionate in loss. Team members, coaches and staff, with courageous curiosity, will you receive this blessing? If so, say we will. Amen. And now, congregation, go in peace, love, and filled with hope to be a good neighbor. Amen. Amen.